Recapping some of the action out of Heat 1 with the two-litre cars. This is James Kay all the way from Great Britain to drive the beautiful little Toyota Carina. He hit the tyres pretty hard. Phil Ward, the big Merck, saw him coming up. Oh, thank you. Bang. Have a listen. That's how the Merck finished. Pace car out on the circuit gives everyone ten minutes to get them reorganised. Look at the work going on the little Toyota. They got bits coming off that there everywhere. That's the uh, the Kiwi crew flew over here to run the car, doing a great job. Phil Ward and the Merck doing the best he can to get the big car back into business. Gee whiz, it hit hard. You can hear the radiator fans just going bang, 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 bang. James Kay sitting patiently. That's all he can do. OK, let's have a look at round three, race two, grid positions. Longhurst, Morris, Blanchard, Ellery, Doolman and Matthews. Paul Morris. Looks like he's asleep. He'll wake up shortly. Green light time, away they go, Longhurst off the line, Morris wakes up and gets pretty snappy too. I think he'll get the run on, nicely done, across the front and have a look behind them. Blanchard and Ellery having a go there, right at the outside, doing a bit of ploughing on the way through, followed in there by uh, Peter Dillman. Only two cars couldn't come back on the circuit. John Cotter and the BMW stuck out with a tyre, couldn't get back to the pits in time. And, of course, young Mark Adderton did a great job in the BMW not starting this time round. Morris and Longhurst hard at it now, out front. Certain determination between these two, Daryl. They don't want to let each other get away, that's for sure. Real racing going on here. The beautiful little BMWs out of the same stable. Have a look at the big Merkers at Thunders around. There's the Toyota looking very sad and sorry, but this fellow is the leading privateer in the two-litre class in England and a very, very good driver. Doing a great job too, Darrell. He out-qualified the BMWs in the wet, right up there, half a second ahead of them, in fact. Now in the second race, because of that accident, he started off the back of the grid and really starting to come through. Well, you can imagine how it would be like to steer it because the wheel alignment would be all over the place. It really took a heavy knock, but it's great to see he's got enough uh, ticker to say, well, put me back and I'll race again. Up front now, Morrison Longhurst, hard at it. And no more so than Ellery and Blanchard. Ellery now, he slips into third place. Blanchard all over the back of him. Longhurst gets getting serious. No doubt about that, he wants to get past Morris. Not an inch between them, Daryl. They're really working hard at this. And there's Dallery and Blanchard. That's another good battle. Those cars evenly match. And look at Kay. Picked up another two spots. Yeah, Kay. Gee whiz, I'm impressed with this fellow. He's come out of here on a circuit he's never seen. A car he hasn't driven. In conditions he's probably used to back in England. But by gee, he can motor. Look at the damage to that thing. Unbelievable. Throws it around. Up front, it's still Morris, of course, and Blanchard. But a lot of a lot of thoughts gone into this, and I'm really pleased this guy's come out because it just shows you the standard of the Australian best drivers against the leading privateer. And there's a car there, too, that also makes that argument. All those hours they spend aligning them, checking the aerodynamics, he's just set a fastest lap in that car. Unbelievable, yeah. James Kay will remember his trip down under, no doubt about that car we haven't seen much of in Australia, the Toyota Carina, but we might see a lot more of them out here. They're very quick, very nimble, and the budget that's gone into this car, nowhere near as big as the uh, the leading BMWs, but they've done a great job, and bringing him out was a terrific experiment. Congratulations to the whole team. That's a good effort. Ripper race happening here at Winton, as you can see now, the battle for third and fourth. That's young Ellery in the uh, Sierra doing a pretty good job holding out Blanchard. Blanchard's been terrorising him all over the rear bump of the car. Ellery, though, holding it together nicely. Very term determined guy, Blanchard. He, uh, he doesn't have a lot to say for himself. Put him behind this wheel, you know he's there. Two very famous ex-cars, actually. The XPJ team came out of Glen Seaton's stable, this, and brought back into this configuration, and that's an ex-Longhurst car. Yep, still got the big names there, even if they're, uh, they're back there in the field a little bit with the, uh, the background and history of those cars. And they're going very, very well in this new two-litre configuration. Just got a little glimpse there of the Carina as he's trying to get onto the tail of these two to get onto the podium. He's got a bit of work to do to do it. Ellery keeping it together nicely. Blanchard, well, all he can do is just try and keep the pressure on, and that's what he's doing, lap after lap. But this is allowing the Carina to get in touch. Kay can see the action up in front, and that's his inspiration. You see that dry line there, Daryl? It's only as wide as the cars. You get off it, it's like slippery, it's like glass. It's absolutely treacherous out there. Good shot of Morris at work, soaring away at the steering wheel now, and you can see Longhurst trying so hard. He's just getting frustrated. He's, he's trying to go around the outside and can't do it. He's trying to sneak up the inside. These cars very evenly matched, and young Morris has come of age as a driver. He can drive as well as Longhurst at the moment. 
And that's the good thing about these cars, Daryl. Very evenly matched, but it certainly is giving the competition. There's a good race developing back in the field as well. No doubt about it. Have a look at Phil Ward. Can you believe this? He really has got this thing taped together with gaffer tape. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a handful in the dry, in the wet, and in this condition, the wheel alignment, everything can be sort of a bit wonky, but he still has a big go. And this has been a big go too from Ellery. Blanchard hounding him again. Look at the Carina now. He's taking advantage of the scrap in front of him. Can he get in touch and get past Blanchard? Blanchard! Oh, tried once too often. And on the outside, hits the infield there. Plenty of water. Let's hope he can get back on the track. Yep, and we saw the uh, Carina go back through there. Here's Blanchard coming back on the other side, pulls in behind those two cars. And now uh, he's got, uh, Kay's got Allery in his sights and he's not going to make too many bones about that. Well, that was just frustration from Johnny Blanchard's point of view. He just tried every line to get past him. He couldn't. Can't blame Ellery for that. He's there to retain a place. But now he's got James Kay all over the back of him. They have experienced the POM. Look at the way that car's come up there. As you saying before, Gerald, it's a credit to the team and it's a credit to Oryx that have come into this sport. Uh, virtually unknown, but a big, big company. I can't believe the shape of it. It's all over the place. But he could see the scrap going on in front and that allowed him to get the touch. But he's got to get round Ellery because Ellery's uh, got the whitest Sierra I've ever seen at the moment. And he's doing a good job, the youngster. Just keep at it. He's taking the racing line. They're going to find a way round him. Yeah, Steve's certainly uh, put in some good time in the last few races, Daryl. He's, uh, he's looking hard at this car, he's looking hard at his future, which way he wants to go. He's certainly putting the points on the board, though. James Kay tries a different line there, trying to get the run out. You can't get any closer now. Puts the pressure over the capital P. Up they come. He goes up the inside. This thing's got a bit of mumbo, I'll tell you. Oh, yes. He'll get the line, too. Beautiful job from James Kay. He can drive a motor car, this boy. We're looking here from uh, Ellery's inside the car cam. Look at that. It's right on top of him still. He's just pulled through, but he's going to get away here as he goes up over the top of the hill into the start-finish straight. And that's about the light you see too because uh, it's quite dark here with the storms that have been moving in and out. And that's probably a more, well, I say accurate point of view of the light that's around. The cameras do light up the circuit a lot more on that shot than uh, we're really looking at here. So now James Kay has got past Ellery. Gee whiz, he's, he's been impressive, hasn't he? Certainly has. Well, look at the sparks coming off. That's something else falling off that car. Started from the back of the grid. He's done a great job to get this far up. He's only probably two, three seconds off the leaders at this particular point of time. Wonderful stuff here. If we look out the windscreen of, of Ellery's car, that's the view he's got of James Kay. So he can really come to terms with him on the twisty bits around the back of this circuit. Kay's car obviously would have handling problems. We saw some sparks flying back. The thing's virtually falling to bits. Back up front, Morris still in front of Longhurst. Longhurst not giving him a break here. Neither of these boys have had a breather. They're over each other, in front of each other. They're just right out on the pace. Well, this has been a really good race, actually, because Paul Morris, the new uh, boy on the block, really, he's been with the team a couple of years now, but he served his apprenticeship with Tony Longhurst, and he served notice now that he's ready to take him on and doing a great job. Has a look in the mirrors. No need to. Longhurst hasn't got the grunt to come up the inside. Too evenly matched. Tries to get a better run through this corner, Tony Longhurst. This would certainly be one of those cases of Tony said, I've taught him everything I know. He'd be regretting it at this particular point in time. Hey, well, this Australia back shortly with the end of this scrap. Welcome back. Wonderful racing here. Headlights ablaze now. I did mention how dark it is. And you notice that from the in car shots. Morris, so gee whiz, he's done a great job now. Oh, Tony Longhurst all over the back of him. Tries to get up on the inside again. What about this for a dice? Wonderful stuff. Morris has got him covered, though. Tony Longhurst lifting wheels, changing the angle, trying everything he can to get past his teammate. Has not missed a trick in the book and just can't do it. The car just won't go that fast to get past him. Fabulous stuff. Evenly matched drivers and evenly matched cars. This is what it's all about. Morris, though, keeping his cool. What about the pressure he's under? Have a look at Longhurst. You can't get much closer. Unbelievable stuff. The concentration that must be going on here. I mean, it's not easy being out in front when you've got something like that happening. And look at these two. They're hard at it again, too. Yeah, don't matter, though. I know it's a good dice up the, up the back or in the midfield. We want to see up front. The Carina still going pretty well in the hands of Kay. There's been bits falling off this thing. He's done a great job. But let's go back up front because that's where the action is. He's certainly getting this car together. It's coming up, it's creeping up on those leaders. He's making ground on them every single lap. 
And this is the reason why he's making ground, because look at the scrap. And there's the Carina, so he certainly made a lot of ground. Longhurst knows that too. Takes that wide a line again. Morris shuts him out, works hard on the wheel. And have a look at this, almost a touch there. Round they come again, Morris up the inside, has another look, and that's about the most dangerous corner. You can try that on, let me tell you. Side by side, lifting wheels. Longhurst working as hard as I've seen him work in a long, long time. Look at the light coming up there now, Daryl. It really is. It's getting absolutely unbearably dark out there. These guys are really fighting the conditions. And they haven't been any further apart than this since the green light went, let me tell you. Morris, he's learned so much today. Tony Longhurst to be saying, well, I've been the school teacher, but the star pupil at the moment doing a great job. And Morris, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. He's just holding him out. Longhurst getting frustrated. But there hasn't been a touch. Been wonderful racing from these two. Absolutely superb stuff, Daryl. As you say, they have not touched. They haven't dinged a panel. They've been right on top of one another like this. Tony's doing a great job not to touch because it's very, very tricky when you're out there like that. Oh, he could have punted him a number of times. There's no doubt about that, but that's not what's it about. Morris, it's just a sheer race, this. Morris has done a great job to withstand the pressure that he's had. Longhurst, he's tried hard on that corner, loses a bit of ground this time, but now makes it up through the sweeper. Back onto the straight again, and Morris, all he can see is lights ablaze in the rearview mirror. And Tony's going to be looking pretty hard at this too. He's going to be seeing that Karina coming into his picture, and he certainly doesn't want to get his bum spanked by the pump. Well, a Karina, I don't know if he'd ever get past them, but he's done a great job to get as close as he has. And have a look at it again. Morris is just so quick through there. He gets a good run, pulls out a length or two. Tony Longhurst seems to be able to close right up there. Both car cars have an advantage. Oh, Longhurst again, he's so close. I think Tony's car's got a very slight advantage in the corners, Daryl. Uh, Paul seems to have that little bit more squirt in the straight line. Well, it, they're, they're so evenly matched that, uh, that really, if you can just get the right run onto the right parts of the circuit, it makes it so hard for Tony Longhurst. See, he's so quick here, but he just hasn't got enough power to get up on the inside. He's tried this line a number of times to get a faster run down into the next series of corners. I think it comes back to the individual setups, Daryl. Almost a touch, almost a touch there, Longhurst. He really got sideways. This is the last week because they're running out left. Oh, no, 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 no. They've hit, and oh, that's a big shot, let me tell you. Longhurst tried. Oh, he's not happy either, Longhurst. He gets out of the car. I can't believe this. Their teammates, these two. Oh, no. He's put the biffo back into the bingle. Oh, Tony Longhurst. He's ropeable. An official comes over. He says, get out of it. Get out of it, I'm not interested. Have a look at it again. Morris, Morris, their wheels locked there. The wheels have locked there. And I don't know if Morris had anything to do with that. A red flag's out. Yeah, red flag there, Daryl. That'll take the results back to the last lap. It's uh, very unfortunate. I think there was a breakage there. Look at that way that tyre turned around. Oh, look at Tony Longhurst. He's having plenty to say. As far as he's concerned, Morris has taken him off. I'm not sure if that's the case. There'll be plenty said about this. Morris Longhurst, Kay Ellery, Blanchard and Ward is how they're finished. Fantastic stuff. It's got to get better. We'll see it at Lakeside Raceway on July 16 and 17. Well, there's the damage now on Morris's car. You can see now, because the red flag come out, they've gone back to the previous lap. That's cost the Englishman a, a win. He's not happy about it, so Morris takes the win. Oh, it's been a great day here at Witten. We've seen Spray. We've seen Biffo. We've seen some spins. But, gee, we've seen some good motorsport. See you next time round.